Fulgrim, known as the Phoenician before the Horus heresy, is the primarch of the Emperor's children traitor legion. He had silvery white hair and was devoted to achieving perfection in all aspects of life. Fulgrim, now a four-armed serpentine demon prince of Slaanesh, is believed to reside on a demon world within the Eye of Terror. During the Drapsite massacre on Istvan V, Fulgrim showed remorse for his corruption, but a greater demon of Slaanesh possessed him briefly. Fulgrim later overcame the demon, imprisoning it and regaining control of his body, which deepened his commitment to Slaanesh and Chaos. Before the Horus heresy ended, Fulgrim ascended to Demon Prince. His current location is unknown to the Imperium and most of the Emperor's children traitor legion. Since the Great Rift's opening in the era Indomitus, rumors suggest Fulgrim is active across the galaxy again. Welcome lore lovers to another deep dive into the grim dark universe of Warhammer 40k. I'm Lion Drag, your guide on this journey through the realms of the fantastic and the macabre. Today we are peeling the layers of deception, betrayal and transformation to uncover the haunting tale of Fulgrim, the Primarch who fell from grace and rose anew as a demon prince of Slaanesh. So grab your bolters and prepare for a warp spanning odyssey through time and space. This is just the first part of the three parts that I'm going to talk about Fulgrim. Like all Primarchs, Fulgrim was teleported from Terra as an infant by the Chaos Gods to toward the age of the Imperium. His capsule landed on Chemos, a resource-poor mining world shrouded in perpetual twilight. Settled during the Dark Age of Technology, Chemos was isolated by warp storms during the Age of Strife, depleting its resources and pushing its people to constant labor for survival. Food scarcity was severe due to disrupted interstellar trade. Fulgrim's capsule was found by Chemos's planetary police, the caretakers, who, impressed by the infant's beauty, persuaded the leaders of Kallax to spare his life despite the usual execution of orphans. Fulgrim was raised by one of his rescuers. Named after an ancient deity, Fulgrim became a legend. By half the typical working age, he met adult labor demands and improved Chemos's mining technology, significantly boosting efficiency. By age 15, he ascended to an executive of Kallax, addressing the severe resources shortages. Under Fulgrim's leadership, engineers revived ancient mining outposts, increasing production and allowing Chemos to trade surplus resources for food. Fulgrim promoted Chemosian art and culture, reviving important aspects of human life long sacrificed for survival. In 830 Malinium 30, Chemos's isolation ended when Stormbird trapships bearing the Imperial Aquila descended from the sky. Fulgrim, stirred by memories, ordered the caretakers to welcome the visitors. In his quarters, Fulgrim met the Emperor of Mankind and immediately pledged his service. The Emperor informed Fulgrim about Terra and the Great Crusade to reunite humanity. Fulgrim returned to Terra and learned that the most of the gene seed of the Third Legion created from his DNA had been destroyed. Addressing the 200 surviving Astartes, Fulgrim's inspiring speech led the Emperor to name the Third Legion the Emperor's Children and grant them the honor of bearing the Imperial Aquila on their armor. Fulgrim and his legion were driven to embody the Emperor's ideals of perfection. This pursuit influenced their military tactics and their highly artistic and aesthetic culture. Fulgrim, with his silver hair, wide eyes, melodic voice and decorated power armor, exemplified this ideal, often wearing intricately embroidered clothes over his finely crafted armor. The bond between Primarchs Fulgrim and Ferus Manus was legendary during the Great Crusade. Their first meeting occurred beneath Mount Narodnia on Terra, where Ferus Manus, Primarch of the Iron Hands, was working in the forge. Fulgrim, Primarch of the Emperor's Children, arrived with his elite Phoenix Guard. Both Primarchs felt a connection through their shared origins in alchemy and science. Upon meeting, Ferus Manus claimed Fulgrim couldn't forge a weapon to mesh his own liquid metal hands. Fulgrim accepted the challenge, and they toiled for weeks, crafting their weapons amidst the noise of hammers and friendly taunts. After three months, Fulgrim forged the Warhammer Forgebreaker, and Ferus Manus crafted the Golden Sword Fireblade. Each declared the other's weapon superior, swapped them, and sealed their friendship. Forgebreaker, with its ebony haft and eagle-shaped head, radiated power and embodied love, honor, loyalty, and vengeance. Only an Astartes could wield it. Ferus Manus earned the nickname the Gargon, initially given by Fulgrim, due to his lack of interest in art and culture, in contrast to Fulgrim's love for beauty. 
Before we dive deeper, don't forget to smash that like button like a chaos lord smashing through the defenses of a loyalist stronghold. Your support helps keep the fire of our lore fueled crusade burning bright, and who knows, it might even attract the attention of a few benevolent demonic entities. When they visited the Imperial Palace, Fulgrim was captivated by the artistic gifts brought by Sanguinius of the Blood Angels. Ferus Manus, unimpressed, called such things a waste of time, Fulgrim teased him as a terrible Gorgon, solidifying the nickname. Despite their differences, their bond remained strong, rooted in mutual respect and admiration. Fulgrim was eager to contribute significantly to the Great Crusade, but initially commanded a small legion. The Emperor's children were placed under the command of Horus and fought alongside his Luna Wolves, leading to a close bond between the two Primarchs. Over several decades, the Emperor's children grew in number, recruiting from Terra and Chemos. When they reached a sufficient size, Fulgrim was given command of the 28th Expeditionary Fleet and set off his own conquests, adding many wars to the Imperium, including the fateful Xenos world of Leran. Fulgrim first fell from the Emperor's grace on Leran, the third world his fleet brought to Imperial compliance. The Lair, Serpentine Xenos worshippers of Slaanesh, the Chaos God of Pleasure, resisted the Imperium. Fulgrim's fleet conquered Leran, eradicating the Lair. The Lair had advanced technology and lived on floating coral islands supported by anti-gravity generators. Unaware of the Slaaneshi corruption, Fulgrim ordered an assault on Leran. The Emperor's children discovered a massive temple dedicated to Slaanesh, containing a potent chaos artifact a demon blade housing a greater demon of Slaanesh. Fulgrim claimed the blade, unknowingly beginning his corruption. The whispers from the demon within the blade gradually influenced him. Fulgrim wielded the demon blade more frequently, replacing his previous weapon, Fireblade, forged by his brother Ferus Manus. Influenced by the demon and persuaded by Horus, who was already corrupted by Chaos, Fulgrim eventually embraced Slaanesh. This path offered him and his legion a route to the ultimate perfection they craved, free from morality and focused on self-obsession. During the latter part of the Great Crusade, the Iron Hands legion encountered the Diasporex, a nomadic fleet-based civilization composed of both humans and Xenos. The Iron Hands, adhering to the imperial truth of the Emperor of Mankind, offered the human members of the Diasporex the opportunity to separate from their alien allies and join the Imperium. When the Diasporex declined, the Iron Hands passed judgment, attempting to annihilate them. However, the Diasporex proved highly skilled in naval warfare, evading crucial battles and severely damaging the Iron Hands strike cruiser Ferrum. The Emperor's children of the 28th Expeditionary Fleet were called in as reinforcements. A joint strike force of Iron Hands and the Emperor's children launched an all-out assault on the Diasporex. Despite knowing a powerful fleet sought their destruction, the Diasporex refused to leave the sector, relying on hidden solar collector arrays to fuel their vessels. The Imperials targeted these vital fuel stations, drawing the Diasporex fleet into open battle. During the ensuing massive naval engagement, Fulgrim's personal gunship, the Firebird, came under heavy attack. Ferus Manus's flagship, the Battle Barge Feast of Iron, rushed to his brother's rescue. To restore his pride, Fulgrim led a shipboarding action where the Emperor's children wreaked havoc on the Diasporex troops. However, ultimate victory eluded him when a subordinate commander to the enemy's ship breached. For months, Fulgrim resented Ferus Manus's actions. Under the influence of a demon-possessed Lair Braid, Fulgrim misinterpreted Ferus' selfless act as a slight. He perceived Ferus' critical comments as undermining jests rather than attempts to puncture his self-importance and restore humility. The demon's blade influence twisted Fulgrim's perception, making him see Ferus' deeds of courage as prideful boasts and rash actions. This growing resentment and misunderstanding contributed to Fulgrim's eventual downfall, as the selfish influence of Chaos claimed the Phoenician soul. Certain members of the Inquisition, who have studied the fragmentary Imperial records from this time, believe that Leran Demon's sword began to exert a powerful Chaos influence over Fulgrim. The Emperor's children forces deployed against the Lair may also have been tainted by their exposure to the concentrated Chaos corruption of that serpentine race who had fully sworn themselves to the 
service of Slanesh, even while wrestling with his own chaos taint, the Primarch of the Emperor's children soon found himself at the center of the events that would bring down the Horus Heresy. Fulgrim met with the renowned Asuriani Farseer Eldrand Ultran of Craftworld Ultwi on the Maiden World of Tarsus, where the Farseer attempted to warn Fulgrim that Horus had been wounded by the Chaos Artifact Blade known as the Kindbratch Anatheim at the hands of Eugen Temba, the planetary governor of Davin, who had fallen to the influence of the Plague Lord Nurgle. The wounding had allowed the Chaos Gods to gain a purchase of the Warmaster's soul, and he was already turning to their service as he recuperated from the nearly mortal wound that Kindbratch Blade had given him. Fulgrim reacted with violent outrage at the Farseer's accusations due to his close friendship with his brother Horus, a bond second only to that he shared with Ferus Manus, the Primarch of the Tenth Legion. This outrage was further enhanced by the influence of Fulgrim's Demon Blade, which led Fulgrim to launch an unprovoked and furious attack on Eldrad and his retinue alongside his Emperor's children, captains and his personal Phoenix Guard. In the ensuing battle, the Emperor's children slew both the revered Asuriani Great Lord Kyrian Goldhelm and the potent Avatar of Cain. Eldrad and the other Asuriani troops sorrowfully withdrew, realizing that Chaos had claimed yet another of the Monkey's Primarchs. Yet they succeeded in killing all of Fulgrim's elite personal Phoenix Guard before their departure. Believing the Eldari had proven themselves a treacherous race that sought to divide and conquer the Imperium, Fulgrim, under the increasing influence of the Demon Blade, ordered the destruction of several Eldari Maiden worlds using virus bombs. And there you have it, lore lovers. Fulgrim's story is one of decadence, betrayal, and relentless pursuit of perfection. And it's also a very long story, so this is just the first part, and two other more will follow soon. If you enjoyed this journey through the Eye of Terror, be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more deep dives into the dark corners of Warhammer 40k lore. And don't forget to join our Discord community to discuss all things grim dark with fellow enthusiasts. Until next time, stay vigilant and may the Emperor's Light guide you through the darkness.